Today we're going to witness an anticipated match against East versus South. Now in the red corner we have South Boston, who is officially weighing in as the home of 32,000 residents. And in the blue corner we've got East Boston, who's officially weighing in as the home of 40,000 residents. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's get ready to rumble! And yes, that is my best Ed McMahon voice. So to choose the victor of the battle between East and South Boston, we're actually going to be looking at seven different categories. These categories include commuting access, affordability, education, uh, culture and environment, green space, amenities, and crime rates. Now, by law, because I'm a licensed professional, I'm not allowed to say which neighborhood is better, which neighborhood is the winner. So, that means it's up to you. You get to decide who the winner is. Put your vote for which neighborhood is the winner in the comment section below, and the winning neighborhood is going to move on to the next Title Town duel fight. So, hey, it's Jeff Chubb, by the way. Welcome to the channel. To learn more about real estate, then don't forget to click the subscribe and like button below. And if you want to talk real estate, mano y mano, then find my information in the description below as well. So, now I'm assuming that you know all about East Boston and South Boston, but if you're looking to learn more about these exceptional neighborhoods, then at the end of this video, be sure to check out our in-depth analysis of each town. So, let's start with crime rates. Now, this one really should be easy, right? Um, it's just facts don't lie. It should be an easy comparison. But again, because I'm licensed, I'm not allowed to spout out any crime stats. It's absurd. This I know. But what I can do is point to research done by someone else and talk about that. So here we go. I utilize the website's areavibes.com. This website has a lot of information about different areas around the country and includes grades on things like cost of living or amenities or, well, crime. So according to areavibes.com, South Boston was given the grade of a D for crime, while East Boston was given the grade of a C. For crime. If you do areavibes.com and type in either South Boston or East Boston, then you're going to find a breakdown of the amount of crime in each neighborhood. Keep in mind the stats that you see there are per 100,000 residents. So a grade of D for South Boston for crime and a grade of C for East Boston for crime. Which neighborhood won this category? Be sure to keep your tally going at home. So that brings us to the next category. The next category is community access. Both South Boston and East Boston are convenient. Both have a T line that runs through them and both have easy highway access. Let's dive a little bit deeper on these to find out who this winner actually is. A negative to both the T lines for South Boston and East Boston is that they really don't run through the middle of the neighborhood, if you will. They more run along the sides. They skirt that side of the neighborhood. So from an accessibility to the T, East Boston does actually have four stops along the blue line with two stops for the red line in South Boston. Now, which actual line is better depends on where you're going. Both lines have transfer points in the orange and green line, but the red line may make more sense for somebody who's uh, working in the financial district versus the blue line. That might make sense for other parts of downtown around MGH. Now, I believe the bus line access is really the same for both East Boston and South Boston, which really leaves us to highway access. South Boston has easy access to the Mass Pike and 93, while East Boston has easy access to the Mass Pike for one, uh, from Route 1A, which dumps you on to 93 pretty quickly and relatively easily. There really isn't any competition between East Boston versus South Boston with access to the airport. The airport's in East Boston. East Boston is ferry access, but South Boston really doesn't need a ferry as well. They're connected to the mainland of Boston. So what about walking accessibility? Residents of South Boston can easily walk throughout the entire city without much issue. Whether you're walking to work to the financial district, downtown, or even to the seaport district, which by the way is actually part of Southie, walking Boston is relatively easy when you live in Southie. Now, in order to walk the rest of Boston from East Boston, you need to first figure out how to walk on water, which I only know of one guy that's actually managed that feat. So, what neighborhood wins the accessibility part of this challenge? Maybe driving is more important to you, or maybe you just love walking, or you need red line access. So, mark it down on your tally, keep it going, as we've got five more categories to go. Which brings us to education. Education is a tough one in Boston. As all neighborhoods, they're part of the Boston public school system. What does that mean if you live in South Boston, then that you could easily go to school in the South End? It all really depends on the school that you're actually assigned to. Then to complicate things a little bit more, there are schools like Boston Latin School, which is part of BPS and is actually the number 36 high school in the country, according to US News. It doesn't matter where you live in Boston. Your eligibility is based off of a combination 
of a student's score on the independent school entrance exam, as well as their recent grades. So every neighborhood in Boston should be a draw, right? Except for one thing. Due to East Boston geography, BPS actually guarantees that every East Boston student gets a seat at an East Boston school. So you don't have this guarantee if you live in South Boston. So who wins this one? Does being guaranteed a slot in your neighborhood really matter? Maybe you don't have kids. Maybe you're not sending them to school. Maybe it doesn't matter at all, or you want to send your kids to West Roxbury. Go ahead and vote. So the next step is affordability. That's the next category. Both South Boston and East Boston have been going through a development boom. For affordability, we're actually going to look at the three housing segments, condos, as well as both single family and multifamilies, homes. So in 2021, the average sales price in South Boston for a condo was $825,000, a single family was $1.1 million, and a multifamily property was just a hair under $1.7 million. In East Boston, the average sales price for an uh, EC condo was $701,000, a single family was a hair under $711,000, and a multifamily was $1.06 million. Yes, we get laughed at at other parts of the country for what we consider affordable, but keep that at home tally going as we've got three more categories left, with the next one being green space. So the next category up is a competition between green spaces between these two different neighborhoods. Both have beaches, both have parks in the harbor, uh, and this is really just going to be a fun round. So East Boston has the largest park in all of Boston, which is Belle Isle Marsh. This is a 360-acre park, which is Boston's last remaining salt marsh. It offers landscape, hiking paths, benches, and an observation tower. If it was a matter of size alone, then East Boston would probably be a clear winner here. But let's talk about what else they have to offer. Both neighborhoods have a beach. Now, if you're not from these parts, then you probably are scratching your head right now. Beach? Boston? Really? We do have beaches in Boston. East Boston is Constitution Beach, or otherwise known as Shays Beach. Southie has a couple beaches, actually. They have Castle Isle Island, Pleasure Bay, which overlooks Castle Island, M Street Beach, as well as Carson Beach. Now, put those last two beaches together, and they're really just one long continuous beach. They actually form a three-mile stretch along Dorchester Bay. There's a reason why Carson Beach has been given the crown jewel of the Boston, best Boston beaches, I guess, if you will, as they really offer everything that Constitution Beach does, but it's bigger and doesn't have the occasional air traffic noise. Now, don't get me wrong. We know we don't really win in a beach comparison with Aruva, but we do have beaches, which is something. And New York, well, they've got the Hudson. So uh, both neighborhoods even have a park on the waterfront. East Boston has Pierce Park, which is a beautifully landscaped park that provides direct access to the waterfront and some of the most spectacular views of downtown Boston, as well as its inner harbor. Pierce Park sports a promenade, two pavilions that provide a view of the city, an amphitheater, an outdoor fitness center, uh, a large playground with spray feature, which is awesome in the summer, and there's even a sailing center at Pierce Park that offers membership to a variety of different sailboats. Now, South Boston has Castle Lime. It's not really an island anymore, but is now a 22-acre recreation site located at Fort Independence. It's a beautiful park that overlooks the Boston Harbor Islands. Things to do at the park are to walk the grounds, swim and relax at Castle Island Beach, which overlooks the calm waters of Pleasure Bay, and a large playground for kids. Now, Castle Island also offers Sullivan's, where if you're in the area, then you really need to stop and grab some fried clams as well as some ice cream. So when it comes to harbor parks, even with me being a little bit of a history buff, I personally would probably find myself at Piers Park in East Boston if I was looking for a little R&R &R and some, well, picturesque views. This brings us to other parks that adorn these two neighborhoods. Now, South Boston has the Joe Moakley Park, which is a 60-acre park along Carson Beach. It has soccer fields, tennis courts, three baseball fields, as well as a track and field stadium. There are additional play fields and playgrounds in this park as well. Now, East Boston has East Boston Memorial Park, which is an 18-acre park with walking paths, a baseball field, batting cages, a football field, a soccer field, two tennis courts, and one playground. But next to Memorial Park is Bremen Street Park, which is another 18-acre park with a fenced-in dog area, one playground, a splash pad, a bike path, an amphitheater, a food truck site, and a community garden. So Southie has Medal of Honor Park, and East Boston has the Noise Playground. South Boston has Dorchester Heights, and East Boston has American Legion Playground. 
We can go tit for tat on these other smaller parks for quite some time, but I'm just going to stop here. I have to say that having lived in both these neighborhoods, I personally went into this one thinking there was going to be an easy winner. I also know there is plans for uh, continued development in both areas with parks planned at the Edison Power Plant and Washington Village and Southie. And then there's the Suffolk Downs development in East Boston, which is also going to have a large park. So who wins this green space battle? Both neighborhoods have a lot to offer their residents. It's up to you. Now, culture environment is the next category. Culture environment is really a tough one. How do you really rate culture environment? I feel like you need to start with museums for culture. So that's where we're going to start. East Boston, they really don't have much when it comes to uh, cultural additions to the city, if you will. The Institute of Contemporary Art, or ICA Watershed, uh, would be East Boston's probably only art center. It's a seasonal space that opens with a new presentation every summer. It's a 15,000 square foot formerly condemned copper pipe facility that has found some new life. Now, South Boston has three cultural gems, the South Boston Children's Museum, Boston Tea Party Ships and Museum, as well as the Institute of Contemporary Art. The Boston Children's Museum is a children's museum that is dedicated to the education of children. This museum is the second oldest children's museum in the country and contains activities that are meant to both amuse as well as educate young children. Now, the Boston Tea Party Museum is located on Congress Street, uh, on the Congress Street Bridge, I should say, and features reenactments, documentaries, as well as a number of interactive exhibits. The museum also features two replica ships of the period, the Eleanor, as well as the Beaver. Now, the Institute of the Contemporary Art was founded in 1936. It strives to share the pleasures of reflection, inspiration, provocation, and imagination that contemporary art offers through public access to art, artists, and the creative process. So who do you think wins the culture and environment category? Keep your tally going as we're going into the last category, which is amenities. So amenities, this is almost like an extra credit category made to well, break up a tie. Much of what we talked about is an amenity. So when we talk about amenities here, we're really gonna talk about the additional things that make a resident's life more enjoyable, like restaurants or shopping. This is also a category that's relatively fluid as restaurants and shopping are constantly changing. And that's the beauty of city living. Change, well, it's a constant. Now both neighborhoods have a library, so that one's a draw. Neither has a hospital, but are readily accessible to some of the best hospitals in the world. That leads us to restaurants. It wasn't until recently when South Boston really, really stepped up its restaurant game. Some of these restaurants include Capo, Lincoln Tavern, the Broadway, Local 149, and that doesn't even include us going into the Seaport District. Now, East Boston, they're starting to get some new restaurants that have made a little of a wave as well. Uh, uh, Connard Tavern, Paza or on Porter, and The Real House, which I love, are, um, just a couple to name a few. Now, when it comes to restaurants, in my opinion, it's really not a fair competition. This is like a Patriots versus Jets matchup. I mean, but I'm just curious to know your thoughts. Now, when it comes to shopping, East Boston doesn't have a whole lot to offer. When, when Suffolk Downs is built out, I think they might be able to start putting up a decent fight, but Southie has East and West Broadway and now the Seaport District, which has a lot of big retailers um, that have come to that area with that new development. Now, South Boston has the Convention Center, so they can take that victory home as well. Fitness-wise, East Boston can put up a really good fight here. They have the YMCA. Now, the Y offers affordable fitness options with a lot of amenities, which actually includes a pool. Then there are a bunch of other small fitness businesses that, well, anybody can utilize. Now, South Boston has a movie theater. East Boston, they don't. So who wins this one? I personally feel like one neighborhood showed up to a gunfight with a knife, but in the end, this one's all about you and your opinion. So the South Boston versus East Boston duel. In the comment section below, please put your who you thought was the winner, right? Because I'm going to keep track, figure out who the winner was. The winner, they're going to move on to the next title town duel. Both East Boston and South Boston are great places to call home, and I can personally say that as I have literally called both of them home in my lifetime. They both offer a person value in their special way. If you're looking to learn more about East Boston or South Boston, then click the video on the screen now. We do a deeper dive into these two awesome neighborhoods. And if you want to talk in person about your real estate goals, then find my information in the description below.